Hello and welcome to the second LaTeX tutorial. And in this we're going to look at some graphics, how we can get nice images, what we can do with these images and how we can then use them in our projects or assignments. So first, what we're going to do is that here we just have some text, nothing else. But to use graphics we need to, to make a use package that contains some graphic properties that we need. So to do this right, use package. In the options we don't need them, so we don't have them. And then we write graphics, graphics, like that. And now we can actually start to use graphics. So let's go down to the, our analysis. Let's um, try and have some graphics. First we want to do is write begin. This basically tells LaTeX that now we're going to start something new. Like we did with the document, we started the document and then we ended it in the end. Here we say backslash and backslash means to the text. Now we're not just talking about normal text, but now we're talking about um, some command that it's going to execute. And we're going to need a figure. We're going to say end and write figure. And then inside this figure we can include our graphics. I like to have to place a tab so I can actually better see how the end and start is going. We need more begin and ends inside the begin and ends. So let's do some in include graphics and then we need to place the graphics. Right now we don't have any graphics out here in our um, finder. Instead we want to, we can upload some new or we can make a new file but we don't want a file, we want some graphics. So let's say upload, we can drag it in or we can select it. I have this nice image of some bacon here. We can press the image, it will load, you can see the image. So in here I'll write Bacon 520.650.jpg. Let's compile and see what happens. Okay, so it does not show. We can see it says it actually does show down here. But as you can see, it's way, 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 way too big. And it also says like here that the HBox is over full by 167 or 76 um, pixels. To do this, we can to fix this, we can scale it. So in the options, we have a square bracket. That means option, we tell the command before, we tell include graphic to do something before it loads the graphic. And in here, we can, for example, write scale equal 0.5. This means we want half the scale of it. I normally start out with my images 0.5, then I can scale them up or down. And here we have the image. Might still be a little too big, it's almost a page. Let's make it 0.2. Might be a bit small, but whatever. Yeah, it's a bit small. We'll go with it like this. As you can see, it's actually placed in the middle of this paragraph here. This is because the tech actually places the image where it fits best. So you won't just have a page with a bunch of images on or you don't have to set them yourself, it does it for you. What I normally do is I wrote an option box up here, right? HT, meaning that we want it in the top of the page and we kind of want it here where we place it. And you can see it now looks a little bit better because we don't have it in the actual top of the page. We have it a bit down so it doesn't look like the image is just the first thing that pops on the page. But having it like this kind of seems weird. It's all the way to the left. Normally, I would like my images to be centered in the middle. It looks way better. So what I'm doing is, I'm writing begin. But what I want to begin is, I want to begin center. Instead of figure, this time I do a center. And I end it with an end center. Now, when I recompile it, it should hopefully be centered at the right place. And as you can see, it's actually centered in the middle. It's very, very nice and it's placed better compared to that the next section is actually also the next section here. But since we have something about bacon, maybe we should not write long ipsum, maybe we should write bacon ipsum instead. That seems a bit better. So normally when you have a figure, you would like something to reference to that figure. You'd like a figure text. You'd like a caption for the figure. So to do that, we can actually just write caption and then we can write the caption. So let's write a nice image of bacon and then end it. Let's recompile, let's see how it looks. 
And here we have it, figure one, a nice image of bacon. It even places figure one itself, meaning that you don't have to, if you move around in the pictures, you don't have to move the figures, what they're called, whatever. It will do it automatically. Then let's try and reference down to it here, because we'll say bacon ipsum, C, figure something. I want to do a reference, so right backslash ref, and then close, curly brackets. And now in here, I want to reference to the image, but to reference to the image, I need to know what I need to reference to. And to do that, I can create a label. That way, I can just write label, then I can write whatever I want to. With figures, I normally write fig, colon, so now I know I'm referenced to a figure. Let's write bacon, just because it's the bacon image. And we can do fig, bacon. Now if we recompile this, we can see here, see figure one. And if we had multiple images, if we move the images around, all the letters will be updated automatically. We can even do C figure, we will be figure one on page, and then we can do a page ref. Now it's not just a ref, it's a page ref, meaning we reference to the page of this figure. And here we have C figure one on page two, and we are on page two, it fits very good. But now, further down here, we actually want to reference to our introduction because we wrote something new and we want to reference to the introduction. How are we going to do that? We write C section something. How do we do it? Let's say ref again, and then write introduction because the ref only contains a number. It contains a number of where this section is. And up here, we just write label again. And for sections, I like to use chap or sec. And let's write introduction. Now down here, we can do a symbol chap introduction. We can recompile it. And there we have it, C section one, introduction. You can write these labels anywhere in your LaTeX document and it will reference to where that is. It will not miss, if you use page ref, it will reference to the page. If you use ref, it will reference to the number in that thing. For example, if it's a section, it will reference to the section number. If it's a picture, it will reference to the picture number. If it's a table, it will reference to the table number. If it's a code block, it will reference to the code block number. And you won't have a figure and a table with a different, uh, or with the same, you will have with the same number because the figure is different from a table. So they will each have their own numbering system. And this way we can easily reference to a lot of different stuff. So I think that's it for this uh, tutorial today. And this is the referencing. Next time I will talk about something else. I'll figure that out until next time. Uh, maybe I'll go, I'll show some tables, how you do a simple table uh, and how you do some more advanced tables. So um, see you next time.